Thanks, James, and thanks everybody else for uh, joining me today. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I, the reason why I really got into this topic and why it interests me so much is because I was not born in Guyana and I was born and raised here in America. And we haven't done a very good job of documenting our history and what it means to be Indo-Caribbean, what it means to be a Guyanese person, what our people have been through. My parents don't really talk about it much. My grandfather's brother is kind of like our family historian and he got me interested in it more. He was born and raised in Guyana and he's actually traveled to India to where his ancestors are from. He even went to the village where his uh, matriarchal ancestors are from and they talked about his ancestors like to him he got to like know them firsthand from the people in the village that grew up with her and it, that was cool and that was very interesting but when it comes to the impact of the British and what it meant to him and how it affected them you know they didn't really talk about it too much and that was really the part where I felt disconnected so when James invited me I was more than happy to do some research and and see exactly what was going on with Guyana in terms of the British Empire. So I just wanted to start out real quick um, and say that um, the main point, because I have an outline written out here, and I'm going to try to keep this down to, to 10 minutes as best as possible, James. But the main point that I'm trying to make is that I overall see British, British colonization as a negative since indentureship and slavery and i just wanted to make a side note that indentureship pretty much turned into slavery i know they say how um the indians had indentured servitude in guyana but they were lied to and it pretty much turned into slavery as well but on paper i'll i'll just say that since indentureship and slavery has left the people in guyana in a state of poverty and they deprived the people of guyana of money land and exploited their resources and also the british threw into turmoil racial tension between the demographics and guyana and it was created by the british initially when the indians and africans arrived which in turn delayed the independence of guyana in the 60s so real quick a brief overview of how the british kind of took over and and came to guyana so it started way longer than I thought. And it started in 1746 when initially the Dutch were there and they were in control and the authorities opened up Demerara to British immigrants. So from 1746 to 1760, the British kept coming in more and more. This influx eventually by 1760, the British made up the majority of European immigrants in Demerara. So from, by 1781, the planters and Demerara and Essequibo had a, a pressured relationship with the Dutch. And uh, this increased the cost of government, which caused a war to break out between the Dutch and the British. The British won and occupied Burbies, Essequibo, and Demerara. So you can see this is the start of the British gaining power in Guyana. So that happened in 1781. Move forward to 1786, the British, the British growth continued and the internal affairs of this once Dutch colony became under British control. So in 1795, after that, this was when the French Revolution happened. And this was a catalyst for the British to take over Dutch colonies all across the Caribbean around this time. Move forward again to 1796. So that was 1795. And now in 1796, Burbies and Demerara and Essequibo became united and they were named the United Colony of Demerara and Essequibo. So Burbies and the United Colony of Demerara and Essequibo were fully under British control by then. And move forward to 1834 or 1831, the London Convention of 1814 
was when they officially named it British Guiana. Um, and then uh, from 1831 to 1966, the British control was in full power and it never stopped. But in 1966, that was when the British ended their rule finally. Guyana claimed independence, and that's how the name Guyana with a Y, it went from British Guiana to Guyana, uh, came to be. So that was just a brief introduction and outline of how the British started from the early 1700s. And it kind of didn't stop between the Dutch and the British in the beginning of the 1700s, but then the British became in full control by the late 1700s. And then from the early 1800s to 1966, British had control over Guyana and their resources, and they had political influence. Um, I don't know any other country that had such a long rolling because I haven't done research on the other countries. I'm so excited to hear from the other people. But uh, some of the examples of why I think this was a negative, um, for instance, the reason why Indians and Africans were brought there was because we were the agricultural masters. You know, we, we knew how to, to grow rice and sugarcane anywhere you, you put us, you know, and that was valuable at that time. Um, so like sugarcane, diamond, gold, bauxite, these cultivation profits never went back to the people under the British rule. You know, this is oppression. This is how the people were left in a state of poverty after they left and they're meant to pick up the scraps that the British left behind. Um, and also this diversive racial narrative between the Indo and Afro communities that the British put um, pit us against each other. And you can kind of see it in the political parties in Guyana that they're pretty much split between black and brown people there. And that kind of goes back all the way back to the history of how the British kind of controlled our demographic in a negative manner. So there's many more examples, but those are the, the two um, that really stuck out to me, resource exploitation and racial, racial inequality. Um, in a modern context, you can kind of still see that there are issues, there's still racial tensions there, um, like I said, with the political parties, but there are stories about racial injustice, um, not with like the government, but between the two different people. Um, and it's bound to happen in a place that's so diverse. It used to be called the land of six people. Um, so I'm not really surprised, but I feel like because the British had that narrative long, long time ago, it still kind of just made its way to like the modern context. Um, so in summary, like I'm grateful and proud to be Guyanese at, at the end of the day. Um, I'm a Guyanese American and it's unfortunate what the British did in my opinion, but I wouldn't be an Indo-Caribbean or Indo-Guyanese if that didn't happen either. Um, I think what they did in, in turn kind of created our own culture that's very beautiful. It's influenced by Africa, India, China, um, and more. And it just kind of came, all came together to who we are today. Um, the problem is the oppression of the British has also caused intergenerational and, and ancestral trauma. And this has affected like the mental health of many Indo-Caribbean people. And you can kind of see those issues still today. Um, Brown, Brown Gyal Diary, they did a great study on intergenerational trauma that you guys really need to check out. And they do mention the history of our people and the British did have a part to play in that. The British and Dutch subjected our people to poor working and living conditions. And you know, these caused traumas from us being displaced from our homeland. Traumas such as gender-based violence, mental health issues, racism, substance abuse, identity crisis. Identity crisis is something I faced. It was part of the reason why I wanted to create Caribbean Crossroads and work with you, James, as well. Um, and also unhealthy relationships. Um, you, you know, these, these are all issues that you still see today amongst Guyana and Guyanese people that are not in Guyana as well still today. So this is kind of my take on it. And I know I'm not from Guyana directly, born and raised, but this is really essentially what, what it means to me.